Hello and good day, eh? I'm Pamela. And I'm Tim. And we're from supergoodcamping.com. We're here because we want to educate and inspire other families to enjoy camping adventures such as we have. Today we thought we'd just chat about what a typical camping excursion looks like as far as the process from start to finish. Tim is usually responsible for the packing part of the process since he's good at Tetrising everything into a smallish car. So I'm gonna turn it over to Tim to talk about how he loads and what the strategy is around that. Well, I'll start with the strategy. Tetris is the right word. Be good at stacking things, making things go behind other things, fit into tiny nooks and crannies, that sort of deal. We typically, for car camping, put things in large plastic bins so that they can be closed back up. And the more individual parts that you have, the messier your site's going to be. You're not going to be able to find things. I typically put cooking things in one of the bins. But bins also don't fit well necessarily. We tend to have smaller vehicles, or rather Pamela does. It's a little difficult to tuck a bin into the trunk, but you can put it between two kids in the back seat. Chairs are long and skinny, so they get stacked in the trunk. I used to try to bin the sleeping bags, pillows, etc. They're much easier to, to deal with as an individual thing. And I also do it in reverse order of what needs to get set up first. Uh, so tent and tarp are generally the last things to go in. Uh, sorry, food is the last thing to go in, but tent and tarps. And then working towards air mattresses, the pump for the air mattress, sleeping bags, that sort of thing. I do the Tetris uh, usually the night before, given the opportunity. It will have been pulled probably the weekend before. I'll lay it on the table, make sure you know we go through the checklist, which we'll provide at some point, so that everything's ready to go. I really don't want to spend till 11 o'clock at night packing things in a car, so we try to be as prepared as possible. In theory, I pull the coolers out the night before. I generally put one round of freezer packs or a bag of ice or whatever to get the cooler pre-chilled, especially if they're freezer packs, they'll often stay behind and then we'll load ones that are still in the freezer into the coolers the next morning with the food. It goes in the car and away we go. We typically try to do it <laughs> where we go out the door at nine o'clock in the morning. It literally never happens. <laughs> We plan for maybe an hour later than we anticipate. And then we're on the road and we aim for campgrounds that are often about three hours from Toronto. So that means if we're leaving around 10, then we're getting up to the neighborhood of where we want to be around one. And we'll often stop and get lunch. And then for Ontario Provincial Parks, you can actually check into your site at two. If you're lucky enough that somebody hasn't camped there the night before, they're quite lenient about letting you in whenever your site is empty. So you can actually get to your site at 10 o'clock in the morning if you want, as long as there's nobody there from the night before. Right, and you can check into the park itself anytime during that day. If you want to go hang out at the beach or what have you, that's totally fine. You don't actually have to go into your site, especially if it is still occupied. They've got till two to get out, but you can hang out in the park. Right, you can use the park's amenities the whole day, the day that you're checking in, and you can use it the whole day, the day you're leaving. So then once we're there, then as Tim said, priority is to get the tent set up so that we have shelter, and then we need to start having sleeping things. So we'll get our air mattresses blown up and our sleeping bags set up. Our kitchen may not really get set up right away because we won't need it till cooking dinner. Yeah, it will depend on how lunch played out, but often I get the slaves, uh, children to uh, start working on, on shelter and I will start usually putting up a tarp for our cooking area. Whether it's rain or sunshine, you still have to eat. So I prefer to not stand in the rain and barbecue. We tend to barbecue or work off of a Coleman grill. Food is not the priority, but you're going to be there soon enough. So I tend to work towards the kitchen area. We have a dining tent that we got a couple years back too, and that also needs to get set up kind of like a tent does need to. I don't cook in the dining tent. At least I try not to. It's more for fair-skinned people that get eaten by the bugs. The bug magnets. Yeah. So that's our day of getting there and getting set up. And then once we have a bit of free time after that's all done, we'll go then explore the park a bit. And then it's time for coming back and having dinner. And then once we're done cleaning up after dinner, then it's 
setting up a campfire typically and sitting around enjoying the campfire and then we're off to bed for our first day. Then our subsequent days usually are get up, have some breakfast. Tim's a great cook and so he does the cooking for us. We're so spoiled. And then it'll be somebody's job to clean up after which we'll assign to various people. Slaves again. <laughs> and then uh, once that's done then we're off exploring again and then back for lunch uh, and then off exploring again or swimming and then back for dinner and then campfire again. So that's sort of a typical camping day. And then as I mentioned in a previous episode, one day a week we'll often go into town around the middle of our camping week in order to restock and to enjoy the small local towns and visit the farmer's market. There are lazy days too, or partial lazy days. I love to read and to sit around, work on my tan a little bit, listen to the birds, what have you, and plow in at what I've been dying to get to for ages is not a bad thing either. We look at camping as a reset for you know getting back to work is our opportunity to just take downtime and chill and enjoy nature. Yeah, de-stress, get your blood pressure down a little bit, that sort of thing. So then we thought we'd talk about just what the last day of camping looks like, which go up reasonably early so that we can get ourselves all packed up and loaded and out of our sight in time for the next people to enjoy it. Right, so we'll have prepped anything that we're not going to have to use on the last day. I'll largely have packed it down, maybe not necessarily in the car, but ready to go. And then it's a reverse of what your first day was. I will say that it takes longer to tear it down, pack it up and get it in the car than it does to pull it out of the car and set it up. Now you're doing the Tetris that you don't have the luxury of the night before. But you've already done the Tetris once, so as long as you're still playing the same game, it's the same thing again, just just in reverse. Except um, it seems to take more space when you're trying to put <laughs> it back in the car at the end. It, uh, it does. Just say when you're going anywhere on a trip and you've got luggage and you're realizing that it didn't go back into the luggage as easily as it went in the first time. Yeah, sometimes the kids end up with stuff in their laps to, for the trip home. It's like, how did that it fit last time? Yeah, I had more time to do it though. <laughs> well, they, they often complain too that bins are falling over onto them in the back seat. Which is usually valid because they do sometimes do that. You take more than you absolutely need because it's about comfort when it's front country camping and it doesn't fit in our smaller cars. We usually won't hang around the park for the day, the day that we're leaving. We're a bit anxious to get on the road and then we'll stop for lunch somewhere along the way. And this is probably one of the one or two times a year that we'll go to one of those burger chain places that we will remain unnamed. The unhealthy ones. Yes, but that's once or twice a year that we'll do that on our way home from camping. It's a splurge for the kids, and they constantly remind me if we haven't been in six months. And it's a tradition that must happen. That's about it as far as our typical process as far as camping. And our campground (laughs) this week is McGregor Point Provincial Park, which was a solo trip for Brandon and I. And so I'm going to kick Tim out at this point, and I'll talk about it on my own. McGregor Point Provincial Park is located near Port Elgin, Ontario. It's along the shores of Lake Huron. It's one of the most ecologically diverse natural places along the Lake Huron shoreline. One of the things that I recall about it was Port Elgin. It was a really small North Ontario town. One of the more interesting things too that Brandon and I learned on our hike there was that it has carnivorous or meat-eating plants that make that area their home and it's a well-known spot to look for migrating birds. McGregor Point is a four season campground. So it's open year round and people in the winter time can stay in yurts and they can go snowshoeing and cross country skiing and go ice skating on a 400 meter skating oval, which is weather permitting, of course. So we quite enjoyed McGregor Point Provincial Park. This was another park where my family came and hung out with us uh, while we were camping. It was not as eventful as maybe somewhere like we went last week with Grundy Lake where we saw bears, but we did enjoy lots of hiking and biking and swimming and hanging out at the beach and driving into Port Elgin. Those are the kind of highlights from what I remember about McGregor Point. Anyways, it's well worth seeing and we would highly recommend McGregor Point Provincial Park. Tim and Thomas didn't join us unfortunately because of the work commitments for Tim. It's never as much fun for us either, just the two of us. Brandon and I though have become fairly accomplished campers in our own right. We did several camping trips that involved just the two of us and we would go to places not that far outside of Toronto. We did several camping trips to Bronte Creek Provincial Park which is near Oakville and we did several to Presqu'ile Provincial Park which is near Coburg. Brandon and I have done several just overnight camping trips on our own 
and quite enjoyed those as well. They're very kind of quick in and out camping trips, so we try to also get there as early as we can. Try to ideally find a site that hasn't been booked the night before so we can get in early and get our site set up, tool around the park and enjoy some swimming or check out the beach, check out the visitor centers, and then also have our campfire and cook our food. And Brandon and I have done many of them like a Wednesday overnight to a Thursday, and they're quite easy to do partly because the parks are not so busy on the midweek days like that so we can easily book one night and we can book it a week before if we want to and we have a small tent he and I are quite proficient at getting in getting that tent set up blowing up our air mattresses setting up our sleeping bags and our pillows and and we've got our camping bin with our kitchen stuff in it so that we can just haul that out get our meals cooked throw it back in the bin stick it back in the car just as we mentioned last week we're not leaving anything that might be a bear attractant sitting out so it's easy peasy to kind of pull stuff out of the bin, put it back in the bin, stick it back in the car. And same with coolers, so that we just have the cooler stuck in the back seat and it's pull it out, get our food out, cook what we're making, clean up afterwards, load everything back into the cooler or the camping bin and stick it back in the car. That's our process for our little overnight trips. That's a bit about McGregor Point Provincial Park. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to reach out to us, we would love to hear from you. Our email address is hi at supergoodcamping.com. That's hi at supergoodcamping.com. That's it until after Christmas. So I hope you have an excellent Christmas day, despite the circumstances and enjoy the rest of the holidays. Thank you so much and talk to you soon. Bye.